Here we're looking for the current I, and this is a sinusoidal steady state current that we're looking for, so that means do a phasor analysis. So looking at the input, we conclude omega is 4 radians per second. So the phasor representation of our input is 10 at 0 degrees volts. Up here, the impedance is J omega L. So that's J 4 radians per second times 1 half. So that's J 2 ohms. 1 quarter is exactly half of that. So this must be J 1 ohms. Here we have 1 over J omega C. So we have 1 over J times 4 times 1 quarter. So that's minus J ohms for the capacitor. Mutual inductance is J omega L. So that's J 4 ohms. Let me update to the circuit so far. Also the current that we're looking for, I'll call that the phasor current form, capital I. So we then need to deal with the dots on the mutual inductance. So what I'll do is sketch in, I'll tidy this up in a second, but any place that we see a dot, we insert the dependent voltage source with the polarity or the positive sign on the same side as the dot. So let me update the drawing so far. Now in order to find the voltage source values for these dependent sources, which again model the voltage induced in one uh, coil due to the current in the other, let me define my currents. I'll do a standard mesh current analysis. So I1 and I2, and I just make note of the fact that the current that we're looking for is the same thing as I1. So let's work on this one first. The current that enters the dotted terminal of the other device, sorry, that's supposed to be I2, is I2 minus I1, and then we multiply that by the mutual impedance, which is J4. And that has units of volts. The way we get the voltage for the other, again, we look at the current that's entering the dotted terminal, and that's I, and multiply by the mutual impedance. That also has units of volts. So at this point, we're ready to begin writing our mesh current equations. So I'll begin down here. So on mesh 1, we encounter negative sign first, so that's minus 10. Going through this device, we encounter positive sign first. The voltage source value is J4. I2 minus I1. Continuing through this device, we have the impedance J2 times the mesh current I1. Continuing, we have the impedance times current going from top to bottom, so that's I1 minus I2. It's a voltage source, bump into the negative sign first. Its value is J4 I1 volts. We have 3 ohms times the current going top to bottom. That's I1 minus I2. And we're back to the beginning, so that's 0. I'll likewise start down here at the bottom for the second mesh. 3 times current going bottom to top. 
that's I2 minus I1. We then bump into the positive sign first, write down the voltage source value, continue this way, plus 1 times the current flowing through it is I2. We say plus negative J times the current flowing through brings us back to the beginning. And we have a pair of mesh equations that need solving. And if you were watching carefully, you may have noticed that I missed that one right there. So let me backtrack for a second and add that to our second equation. So I needed to write the impedance J times the current going from bottom to top, and that was I2 minus I1, all results set to zero. Now I've jumped to my maple worksheet with the solution. So there's the equations. In a somewhat simplified form after I collect the terms right there. Solving the equations. And then assigning those, we end up with 3.29, if I round that, 3.29 amps at a phase of 9.5 degrees. So let's come back to the original circuit drawing. So based on our maple solution, we write in phasor form that I1 is 3.29 at 9.5 degrees amps. Again, that's the current we're looking for, I. So converting that into its time domain representation, we've got 3.29 cosine. Operating frequency was 4 radians per second add the phase, phase angle in degrees, and there's our AC 